Hello and welcome back everyone to Bloodstained Ritual of the Night Hard Mode Fresh on Rocket Rabbit Commentaries. And in, this after, and in this episode, after successfully finally taking down Sengetsu 1, we're going to be continuing on to Danjek Cathedral. And hope- ooh, we got 50 gold. And hopefully taking Yay. down Kraftwerk. Mm. Ah, it's so nice to actually have my dull hammer heads. Thankfully, the reason why we- uh, the reason why, um... It, it annoys me that double hammer heads get deleted by Zangetsu is specifically because I, uh, they are actually a relatively good damage steroid for the rest of the bosses. They don't do all that much damage per hit, but they do a rather a rather consistent amount of damage, and that's significantly more important. Although when you get to rooms like this, it gets very confusing to figure out which of uh, which of uh, the double hammers on screen are yours and which are uh, and which are uh, which are you know um, are are just straight up enemies. Uh, the en the enemy ones are darker in color and they're a little bigger. Yeah. Um, no, they're goofy. Hey, Benjamin. <laughs> Oi, wait a minute. Are you human? Uh, what does it look like? Yeah, it looks like you're an elf. Oh, well, you look like an elf. Body is covered with weird decorations. <laughs> Your body's covered in weird decorations. I mean, I get the hat, but the ears. I mean, wow! I've never been to Spain. I I like the Benjamin's an idiot. Uh, I'm Miriam. Benjamin, you shouldn't be here. I know, I know. But I'm so scared, I can't even stand up. Well, then lean on us for a little bit. I just want to go home. Hmm. Do I have any items that could help get him home? Yes, uh, we okay. bought nine of them at the start of the game. Here, have a waystone. I get it. So, so text in parentheses is is the, the, char thoughts. the character doesn't move their lips when they're thinking it. They just they they just narrate it. Yeah. I think it worked. Mm. Yay! And he gave us a thousand gold. No, I mean, see, you could have just thought that. You didn't have to say it out loud to yourself. No, I like saying things out loud to myself, damn it. I also like saying things out loud to myself. It is a blessing and a curse. Mm. Alright, and this one is the 11th Hour Parry. It is very important that you know about 11th Hour. It'll come in very, very handy. You know what comes after the 11th Hour? We're not having Midnight Persona shenanigans. The eleventh hour is followed by the twelfth hour, or the zeroth hour, if you actually if you actually know how to uh, if you actually know how to read a clock. Zero hour, nine a.m. And I'm gonna die on this boss again. I finish off the Barbados. Thank you. You see, another thing that I should have done whilst uh, whilst uh, we finished off uh, when we finished off Zhang One is I actually head back to the village specifically to go pick up the next uh, batch of quests, but I didn't do that. So, welcome to the uh, 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 cathedral. It's Dan Chet, come on. Also, we just got our first passive shard, the dagger expertise. It is totally useless for us because we I just do not use the daggers. Like daggers are not actually all that terrible of a weapon if you decide if you decide to max out dagger expertise and uh, and get the literal best dagger in the game. But the literal best dagger in the game requires that you you know effectively go the entire game using daggers. And oh look, we got the, li the literal second best uh, short sword in the game, the Rafa Baral. No, we're not going to be switching over to it because the uh, because. The Rava Baral, despite being extremely good, also has extremely short range. And I like to have range on my melee attacks. Hmm. That's an Thank interesting, you, Hammerheads. It's an interesting scar you have there. Uh, what scar is that? It appears that the left eye has been completely destroyed. Oh, yes. Yes, he does. Hmm. Yes, quite. Is that a birthmark? N no, it's a, it's a pirate mask. <clears throat> and here we get access to Shortcut! <sighs> this is one of the only runs that I have ever had where I actually use Shortcut um, in, in, any, in any meaningful way. <laughs> but I'm not going to use it uh, right now. I'm going to use it when we actually start getting additional travel powers. Because... 
yeah, shortcut is actually really good for uh, for just uh, for having multiple travel powers, uh, both active um, and at the ready. If you uh, if you wanted to do that, we got double Rava Brawl in one fucking room. It's Yay. nuts. But uh, in order to in order to make the uh, uh, the Rava Valar, which is effectively the uh, symphony of the Night Chrysogram, you need to have is it nine? It's either four or nine Rava Brawl, and um, yeah. Robin Brawl has actually got a relatively uh, a relatively poor drop rate on these uh, on these uh, killer barbers, so we're not gonna go farm for it. I like Robin Valar as a concept, for the record. Uh, uh, having uh, having access to the symphony of the night, of the night Christogram is technically, honestly, a really really cool thing, but it's also a weapon I I am just not comfortable using, so I never actually use it. Got the, the dance, dance mask. mask. And then in here is the other rose ring. Yay. Mm. And now we get to meet another NPC. Todd the Barber. A demon! Wait, I'm a good killer barber. Ha, 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 ha. say as much. I'm not a cutthroat. I've never cut anyone. Uh, well, well, I have, but, but it's these scissors. They've cursed me to become a demon. Then why not cast them aside? Cast them aside? If I could take them off, I wouldn't be cursed. Yeah, I, I like Todd's very limited amount of dialogue, honestly. The name's Todd. And the Sweeney Todd. Yes, it's, it's a reference to Sweeney Todd. <laughs> That's a good one. Just make the hairstyles up then. Oh, geez, to think to think it's been to, to, to think it's been over ten years since Johnny Depp br helped bring to life a play that nobody had heard of. You have the worst curse ever. Yes, quite literally. Yes. Six hundred and sixty-six different hairstyles, Cloud. Can you think of more than one hundred hairstyles? That is not. Um. <sighs> no, 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 not not cut you, cut it. Well, I mean, you gotta you gotta think that first there's styles generally designed for women, and then there's styles that are generally designed for men. You have a deal. All right. So now we get to change Miriam's outfit. Fucking finally. This was not in the original game. They had to patch in a color wheel, but but, uh, but when they did finally patch in the color wheel, we got the ability to uh, to turn Mir uh, to turn Miriam's outfit into a deep purple. <laughs> Yay. Come on, trying to get there. Oh, I see that he yes. specializes in women clothing and hairstyling. Yes, throughout the castle, you'll be able to find um, you'll be able to find books that have additional hairstyles for Todd, and giving them to him will level him up and allow you to access those additional hairstyles. They don't actually matter that much, to be perfectly honest. I I don't actually change Miriam's hairstyle, but mostly because if you follow if you follow where she is standing on on the screen at the moment, it's relatively difficult to tell what even her hairstyle is, especially if you happen to have the head accessories on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's a cool feature, mind you, but it only really impacts cutscenes, and even then, not as much as they want it to. I like it that when she goes to the barber, that she actually sits down in a chair. Yeah, that is nice. <laughs> no, we got a third Rava Brawl. God damn. Mm. <sighs> hey, Bloodbringer. Angry sword. Angry possessed sword. There we go. <laughs> All right, we're level 15. We should be able to take down Crackford quite nicely. Uh, we have saved our hairstyle. All right, Craftwork, let's go. I have a little bit of a problem with Craftwork coming in on hard mode fresh, but not so much. Mostly because I've got access to True Arrow, and uh, and with True Arrow, this fight is honestly much easier than uh, than I make it out to be. The big thing that that's difficult about Craftwork is how fucking large he is. It's very easy to end up getting hit by his hit uh, by his uh, hurt box on accident, like that. Mm. Yeah. Yes, very wall mastery. No, well, yeah, you you've seen this fight craftwork before. Yeah. Well, now that's on hard mode. Now I, 
it, because the, the fight's going to take a little longer, so I have more time to appreciate the idiosyncrasies that make them. A, and that was fast. Okay. Yeah, Crossbrook doesn't actually get any uh, uh, doesn't get significantly more HP on hard mode. He just attacks slightly faster, and his attack pattern is slightly different. Like um, he he gains like an additional hit on each on each of his uh, combo moves. Crusader's armor and the best familiar in the game, the Silver Knight. Yay! Two, we won't two, actually first be using the Silver Knight for a majority of the playthrough, though. I I mean we're gonna use it for the Zang Two fight that comes up later, but like that's about it. Yeah, and it's not nice because break. Silver Knight uh, loses up uh, and uses uh, uh, viability during uh, uses viability during uh, hard mode. It doesn't. What Silver Knight what Silver Knight does do uh, does do is it starts off weaker than where we have to where we have to be in order to actually you know get him. Because I like I like I mentioned I have in order to even make it off Gallon Minerva I usually have to get up uh, uh, all five of my Dola Hammer heads. Which means that my Dola Hammer heads start off with the ability to do upwards to 15 points of damage by the time uh, per hit by the time I actually get to uh, Silver Knight. And Silver Knight starts off with the ability to do like one or two points of damage per hit. And leveling up familiars doesn't actually increase their damage output all that much. You need uh, you need additional uh, grades and ranks of them in order to get the uh, the decent uh, power ups. <laughs> the mini map says so, there's a chest video. in this room, and then when you find the chest, the chest icon disappears from the mini map. Uh, yeah, but <sighs> blue chest, uh, blue chests are weird. I don't think we'll actually go through the. I don't think we're actually gonna go through the um, uh, the bookcase that tells us why blue chests are weird. This is the Santa Hat room. You are required <laughs> to know about this. You are required <laughs> to know about this room if you play the randomizer because. Since the randomizer was broken for a year and a fucking half, they decided that the quick and easy fix for it would be to make it so that Dimensional Shift and uh, Zangetsu and the Zangetsudo would be available uh, pretty much regardless of what seed you spawn. It still doesn't actually work all the damn time, but it works most of the damn time. The reason why you need to know about the Santa Hat Room is because they decided to put the uh, safety spawn for Z the Zangetsudo in the Santa Hat Room. There's Heretical Grinder. I know that a lot of people actually have a uh, have a lot of good success with heretical grinder, but I'm not sure if they bothered to farm it first or not. Nero, Mrs. Claus. Nah, well, not so much Mrs. Claus as you know, a uh, uh, Mrs. Elf. Oh, I thought I thought the elf ears were attached to the hat you're wearing right now. No, uh, no, the elf ears that we have are are an independent accessory to the beast beret. Oh, nice. <laughs> the Beast Beret. Well, then we could be, uh... We could be Santa's Workshop Elf, then. Mm, yes, we could. Very well, the tall, tallest elf in the workshop. Mm, or we could be a Herbie, you know? I mean, uh, we don't find any dentists in the, in, the, in the castle, but there's likely to be at least one. And we have uh, Buddy the Elf. Now we're gonna have Bonnie the Elf. Ah, 50G. I, I don't know the what happened. Uh, what happens to the uh, cash? Uh, the cash blue chests that that allows them to spawn with such low payouts. Because on normal mode, I swear to God, I have never seen a 50, a 50G uh, a blue chest uh, occur in normal mode. But on hard mode, it uh, for the first hour or so, it happens relatively frequently, and it bothers me that it does because. 50G is like one is like one that, uh, fourth of a fucking potion. It's not it's not honestly worth it's barely worth picking up. I would rather have materials in it so that I could you know either so I could either sell them uh, uh, for their value or attempt to uh, further the uh, the crafting the crafting books. Trolling through. Spe uh, specifically for um, not specifically for uh, uh, food uh, foodstuffs. Yep. Yellow motion. Mind you, I am happy that we uh, that we have the ability to see uh, uh, fifty gold spawns on uh, on on uh, candles and torches because that is very nice. Yeah, it saves you a little time. 
Mm. Now, th at this point, I actually recognize that I forget that I forgot to go into a specific room that's here, and I really should go into it because one of the cooking recipes is there. But I don't think I'm gonna go into it here. No, I'm not. Uh, yeah, Mostly so because we don't actually need the recipe with book that the recipe that's over there, because uh, I think it's the obsidian equipment. Yeah, I think it's obsidian equipment. We crash. We've arrived, my lady. Thank you, zombie coachman. <laughs> Our friends are becoming even more grotesque. Mm, ah, right. We have 420 HP now, Mr. Cloud. Isn't that a good thing? Yeah, it's more than 360 whatever we just had. Mm, uh, okay. <laughs> Make sure you get this warp room. This warp room is very important for the end of the game. Like, the start of Act 3 is because of that warp room. So there. 500G! Hmm. And now we get the ability to finally actually start getting the other uh, familiars in, uh, in the game, specifically Caraboose. Caraboose is a familiar that, although is very important, especially since we just got it, although it's very important during your first playthrough, is com is a completely skippable afterwards. Mostly because, well, you after your first playthrough, you start to realize that hey, my own healing, uh, specifically through food items, is significantly better than any amount of healing that Caraboose is going to give me. Especially because in order for Caraboose to heal me, you have to actually use fair, you have to use fairy. Uh, uh, healing items, which means you have to get that specific chest for the fairy healing item uh, for the fa fairy healing item recipe book. Fairy, fairy potions, I think, are slightly better than normal potions, but very slightly. And the and that's all Caribou's honestly has access to. She gets ac she gets access to uh, fairy potions, fairy high potions, fairy uh, full heals, fairy panaceas, and I don't remember if she actually gets access to the to fairy versions of the other of the uh, status ailments, but in order to actually get them, in order to actually uh, make them at all, you have to farm a uh, caribou's or the other or the other or the other fairy monsters so much that it's extremely difficult to actually get a, a large cop a large amount of those he of those healing items. Oh yeah, cryo wraith is now above is now not only not only do they do they put an additional cryo wraith above here, but they also put additional uh, gargoyles in, in, in this room as well. So yeah, it is it is very easy to uh, to get cursed on hard mode because uh, of of the increased enemy density. Yeah. That was very enemy dense. We were just in. Yes, specific rooms uh, in hard uh, specific rooms in hard mode end up you know really showcasing off how how the increased enemy density really hurts uh, the player in general. Um, all right. Uh, in the next episode, we will start Tower of Twin Dragons. We won't finish it, obviously, but we will start it. Be safe, everybody.